This is part 6 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is media type formatter, how to return only JSON from ASP.NET Web API service, similarly how to return only XML, how to return JSON instead of XML from ASP.NET Web API service when a request is made from the browser, and finally, I'll point you to an article that describes how to return CSV formatted data from ASP.NET Web API service. So what is media type formatter? Media type formatter is an abstract class from which all the formatters derive from. For example, within ASP.NET Web API, we've got this JSON media type formatter class. So this is the class that deals with JSON data. For example, when we issue a request to an ASP.NET Web API service with accept header value as application for slash JSON, we get the data formatted in JSON. And it is this class, JSON media type formatter, who is doing that for us. So this class is also inherits from this abstract class media type formatter. Similarly, we have XML media type formatter class which deals with XML data and this class also inherits from this abstract class media type formatter. So if you look at the code that we have got in webapiconfig.cs, this is the code that we have put in place in our previous video. Look at this property JSON formatter. So if we right click on that and then if we go to the definition, look at this. This property is actually returning an instance of type JSON media type formatter. So if we right click on that and go to definition, JSON media type formatter class is inheriting from base JSON media type formatter. If I right click on that and then go to its definition, that class is inheriting from media type formatter class. So JSON media type formatter class is inheriting from this abstract class media type formatter. Similarly, we have also got XML formatter. And if we look at this property, notice it is returning an instance of type XML media type formatter. If we go to the definition on that, this derives again from the base abstract class media type formatter. Now, if we want to create our own custom formatter, let's say for example, we want to create a formatter that is going to return data in CSV format, then in that case, we will create a class which is going to inherit from this media type formatter class and then implement its abstract members. In fact, at the end of this video, I'll point you to an article that describes how to do that. Now, Let's discuss how to return only JSON from ASP.NET Web API service irrespective of the accept header value. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So within our register method of web API config.cs file, first of all, let's comment these two lines of code. We're going to make use of the config object that is coming into this method as a parameter. Config dot formatters dot remove. So we want to remove a formatter. Which formatter do we want to remove? We want to remove the XML formatter because we know that we want the service to only support JSON. So to remove the XML formatter, we are going to use the config object again, config dot formatters dot XML formatter. So this is going to completely remove the XML formatter. So whenever we make a request to the service, it is always going to format the data using JSON formatter, irrespective of the accept header value in the request. So use this technique if you want to create a service that is going to support only JSON and not XML. So the build has succeeded now. Let's go ahead and issue a request from our browser. Notice the response is in JSON format as expected. Now let's issue this request from Fiddler. Notice we have set accept header to application for slash XML. When we execute this and when we inspect the response, notice we are still getting JSON. Irrespective of the accept header value, we are always going to get JSON. Look at that. We have set it to application slash XML, but we are still getting JSON. If I specify application for slash JSON, execute that again you know, we are still getting JSON. So irrespective of the accept header value, we are always going to get JSON formatted data. Here is the code that we just discussed. Now let's see how to return only XML instead of JSON. So to do that, we will do the opposite. Instead of removing the XML formatter, we will remove the JSON formatter. Let's save our changes, build our solution, build succeeded. Now let's go ahead and reissue this request. 
So when the request completes successfully, it's going to return XML instead of JSON. Notice we have got XML back. Now let's issue a request from Fiddler and say, so we have set the accept header to application for slash JSON. Let's execute this. And when we inspect the response, notice we are getting XML. Now if we set it to XML, we are still going to get XML. So irrespective of the accept header value, we are always going to get XML. So notice again, the result is an XML format. Here is the code that we just discussed. Now let's discuss how to return JSON instead of XML from ASP.NET Web API service when a request is made from the browser. So here is what we want to do. Let's flip to Visual Studio. First of all, let's comment this line of code. Let's build our solution. Build succeeded. Now let's issue the request from the browser. Notice we are getting XML. We always get XML back when we issue a request from the browser. And that's because of the accept header value in the request. Let's inspect the request that we have issued from browser. So let's flip to Fiddler. I'm going to drag and drop this request onto the Composer tab and look at the accept header value, text for slash HTML. So for this accept header value, the ASP.NET Web, uh, Web API service is always going to return XML. But we want to do the opposite. Instead of returning XML for that accept header value, we want to return JSON. So whenever a request is issued from the browser, we want to return JSON instead of XML. But when a request is issued from tools like Fiddler or even from a client application, and when we set accept header value to something else, for example, something like application for slash JSON, then we want JSON formatted data. If I set it to application for slash XML, then we want XML formatted data. So when a request is issued from the browser, we always want JSON data back. But when a request is issued from any tools like Fiddler or from a client application, where we set the accept header value to application for slash XML, for example, that accept header value should be respected and the data should be formatted in XML. So let's see how to achieve this. There are two approaches to achieve this. Approach one, within our config file, let's use the config object and get hold of the JSON formatter. And then on that, we're going to call supported media types collection property and to that we are going to add a media type and let's add new media type header value and the media type header that we want to add is text for slash html so when the accept header value is text for slash html we want to use json formatter to format the data so let's go ahead and build our solution build succeeded. Now let's issue the request from the browser. Notice we got JSON data. Now let's inspect this in Fiddler. Now first of all, notice it says response body is encoded. Click to decode. So I'm going to click on that. And if we click on JSON tab, notice we got JSON formatted data. But then if you look at the response header, we've got content type here. And look at the content type it's still text for slash HTML. But if you look at what we have got, we actually got JSON back. So I expected the header value to be application for slash JSON instead of text for slash HTML. This is a bit misleading. But then the good thing is, if we go onto the Composer tab and if we specify the accept header value as application for slash XML, and when we execute this, we are still going to get XML back and the header value is application for slash XML. If we specify this application for slash JSON, we're going to get JSON back. But the only problem here is that it is setting the accept, uh, I mean the content type header value in the response to text slash HTML. We would actually like it to be application for slash JSON. Let's see how to do that. Here is the code. Now let's look at approach two. With approach two, we'll solve the content type header value problem as well. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Within Web API config.cs file, I'm going to include another public class. The name of the class is going to be custom JSON formatter. So here we are creating a custom JSON 
formatter. So this is going to inherit from JSON media type formatter class. This class is present in a different namespace, system.net.http.formatting. So make sure you have that namespace included. Let's include a constructor for our custom JSON formatter. Within the constructor, all I'm doing is adding a supported media type. So this dot supported media types dot add and we want to add a new media type header value and the header value that we want to add is text for slash HTML. And then we want to override one of the methods in the base class that is in JSON media type formatter. So I'm simply going to type override and then press space and then it's going to show us all the methods that we can override. So I'm going to override this method, set default content headers. So that's what we want to do. We want to set the default content header for JSON media type formatter. And I'm going to include this call there, base dot set default content headers and then we have this object that is coming in, the HTTP content headers object. So we are going to use that and set the content type to new media type header value. And the new value that we want to set it to is application for slash JSON. And then we will have to register our custom JSON formatter within the register method. So let's go to our class web API config, which has got the register method. And then here, let's comment this line. Config.formatters.add. We want to add a new instance of our custom JSON formatter. Let's save our changes, give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's issue the request from the browser. Now let's inspect this request in Fiddler. So let's double click this. Notice we get JSON formatted data as expected. And if we look at the header, notice the content type is set to application for slash JSON. And then if we go to the composer tab and set uh, you know, the accept header to XML, we are going to get XML data back. If we set it to JSON, we are going to get JSON back. With approach to, here is our custom JSON formatter class code. And this is how we register our custom JSON formatter. Finally, let me show you how to create your own custom media type formatter. So here we have an article that describes how to create a custom media type formatter that's going to format the data in CSV. So let's navigate to that article. Notice here they are creating a class CSV media type formatter that inherits from the abstract media type formatter class. So follow this article if you want to create a custom formatter that is going to return data in CSV format. I'll have this link available in the description of this video if you need it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.